So we will move to item nine. Oh, and just a note too that the um, the Vodafone briefing has been um, withdrawn today because we're probably going to find another way to discuss that. So item nine. Um, and welcome Ross, Grant and Rowan, if you thought that right. If you'd like to introduce yourselves, that'd be great. Turn your uh, mic on, Ross. Thank you. And Rowan Lathan, who's our contract and project lead. Great. Welcome, guys. Uh, the purpose of this report and the, the next report is closely uh, related to um, this is to inform uh, the committee uh, the risks associated with closed landfills uh, within the Christchurch city boundaries and seek endorsement for further investigation. Um, there's approximately 131 closed and former landfills in Christchurch Banks Peninsula. Uh, Council owned 56 of these sites, 48 are in Christchurch and 8 on Banks Peninsula. Uh, as you'll see on uh, page 54, that the, uh, there's about 10 of these in the low-lying estuary area. Uh, the risk assessment and screening tool developed by consultants Tonkin and Taylor identifies five key areas of risk, uh, being flooding, sea level rise, earthquake related subsidence, impacts on drinking water wells from leachate discharge, surface water contamination, human health in terms of coming into contact with refuse and potentially contaminated material and effects from uh, landfill gas and environment receptors as risks from leachate discharges. Um, the past three months, uh, Council staff have carried out uh, site inspections of 10 closed landfills at the highest risk uh, due to climate change uh, driven sea level rise. Uh, three of these closed landfills have been identified as requiring remediation. Uh, Part of the Bexley closed landfill, which we'll talk about in the, 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 uh, the next report. Um, Gollins Bay landfill in Littleton Harbour and Le Bons Bay closed landfill in uh, Le Bons Bay. Uh, the potential risks posed by closed landfill sites are numerous with the immediate impacts of coast erosion and sea level rise evidenced by our changing environment. The risk screening tool developed by Council will support a prioritisation across all sites for inclusion in the annual landfill aftercare budget. Staff seek endorsement of the proposed risk-based approach and a re recommendation that funding be dedicated to the remediation of at-risk sites uh, be included in the long-term plan. Uh, so yeah, really is there any questions? Um, the staff recommendations are, are there. So Ross, how long has that landfill aftercare budget been in place? Is that a recent one or has it always been there? Yeah, my my predecessor how much is Dave it? Harris, it, um, it was definitely there in 2015 when I started and I've seen records going back to 2010. Okay. But um, I haven't looked further back than that. Right. But of course that's not enough to do this work, so you need extra in the LTP. Yeah, um, we, we do. Um, th that amount we, we need to, that's sort of in the next report too, we, we need to sort of um, understand how much may need, be needed. We're currently 150k a year uh, for, uh, is in that fund. Uh, we have 240k in there at the moment. Uh, but the, uh, with the note to there is that the final value of the recommendation, uh, remediation work rather, will be required to be determined by the scope of work and will need to be considered as part of the long term plan. So when will you have any idea of how much your bid will be in the LTP? Uh, it will vary on uh, the, the landfills that, that yeah. have been identified. Um, the, the next report we have uh, Bexley. Um, we've got a yep. number of options in there. Yep. Uh, that ranges from about 1.5 million through to about 9 million just for that 600 metre stretch of um, 
the estuary. Yeah. So it's 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 a pretty hard one to estimate. Yes, but when do you think you'll have an estimate? Uh, once we've done some more work in terms of what was required, and, and we've certainly identified three in the meantime. Just that we're working on the budget now. We, we will be okay. integrating it into the uh, asset management plan, activity management plan, which will be uh, tabled with you in June, I think, 2020. Mm -hmm. And so that will give you some ballpark. Whether at that time Tonkin and Taylor have finished the work, and can I'm not quite sure, but we will be giving the best estimate that we've got at that point so it can be built into the long-term plan around the... the right, those I'm just giving things. you a heads yes. up that we'll need to know yep. sooner rather than later. Yep. So are there any questions, committee, Melanie? Um, it says um, in 4.6 that you've done site inspections at 10 closed landfills. Are they all council-owned landfills, or are they some of the ones that are privately owned? Um, there was a mix of both, mainly council-owned, um, and we looked at primarily ones that were right by the, either a harbour or an estuary, um, so most prone to sea level rise. So I guess what I'm wondering is, um, for landfills that are privately owned, which I didn't realise before I read this. So whose responsibility is it to make sure that... The landowner. That you're right. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're assessing them, whether they're council or privately owned, you're assessing them on risk, and if you find that there's a privately owned one that's high risk, what happens then? Um, to be honest, the main focus is the council owned ones. Um, yeah, but I think it's a good question that Melanie's Contaminated posed. sites are controlled by ECAN, and there is a register of all of those sites, and there is criteria on those sites. Um, when I say that, however, and we did one, we drilled through one the other day, there are always identification of new hail sites, what they call hail sites, um, <coughs> uh, all the time, and so that register is growing. Um, and as things are identified, they're added to, and then the landowner's responsibilities um, Okay, so ECAN yeah. deals with the yeah. privately owned ones. Any other questions? Yanni? Um, has there been any consideration of, um, at a higher level, integrated either cycleway or walkway? Sorry? So, you know, one of the issues we've had in some of these areas has been the walkway, the 360-degree trail, and obviously issues around cycleways. But if you look at the map, what you see is... Um, a number around the coastal edge. Oh, hang, oh Yanni, um, that might be better in the next item. This one we're just endorsing that the investigations continue on determining the sites at risk. So yeah, but I get that, but I was also just trying to understand if there's any synergy around pathways in terms of recreational <laughs> access that's been I know, but that would time. sit better in the next one, I think. Look, the very early stage, we're just um, yeah, really here inf informing about uh, um, yeah, the work that we're intending to do, but certainly that will form part of any remediation work that we, we're considering. Right. And can you just, um, just one other question, is the work on the Redcliffs, Redcliffs Park, where there's new schools going, was anything considered there? Uh, we, we haven't done any work on that yet. We, we, we've, uh, it's not been one of the ten that we've included, but a, as you'll see from the mapping there, it is certainly one that would be uh, looked at because it's in that estuary area. Just um, one point to add that the, the initial survey that we've done of those ten sites was largely looking at uh, coastal erosion impacts because yep. um, that's been flagged um, kind of as our, as our priority. Um, a much larger study with the Tonkin and Taylor work is looking at all risks, so those five risks that Ross uh, listed. Right. Yeah, but the ones in the map are the ones that you're doing the work on, right? No, that's just to identify where old landfills are. Yeah, yeah the you. closed landfill. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Phil. Yeah, thank you guys. The, just so it's right in my head, the Tonkin and Taylor thing that you're doing is just the ones on the for the sea level rise and on the estuary edge or something, or I might have misunderstood, or it's you're just going forever to find as many as you can. So, so the Tonkin and Taylor report is, a, is basically a risk screening tool, and so we've got every closed landfill in Christchurch City and surrounds in that tool. So even if they're way back in, say, um, Horsell Junction Road or something like that? Yep, absolutely, something absolutely. So that, that tool considers those five um, areas, so landfill gas, leachate, um, you know, sea level rise, coastal erosion. So 
you know, depending on how each site scores in that risk matrix, we can then prioritise it for remediation. Um, for the, the ones we've looked at you know, in this report, it's really just those ones at risk of coastal erosion. Yes. Um, and that's kind of come out of the Fox River event on the west coast. Yeah, yeah I can fully understand. We yeah, but, but uh, as a Tonkin and Taylor, I'm just sort of, if they, you could be opening up a, um, a very expensive uh, report, uh, investigation. It, it, it could go on, it could be heaps, or you're thinking of just doing it in your budget that you've got. Yeah, well, well, the main thing is this risk tool mm -hmm. highlights the ones that you need to look at first. Yes. That says you don't need to look at these, these aren't a problem. So you focus yeah. your efforts on the ones that come out of the risk matrix. Ah, la, the next one that's yeah. coming up. The, the Tonkin and Taylor work has been done by the Ministry for the Environment across the whole of New Zealand at a very high level, paid by the Ministry for the Environment. We're giving you a heads up that that work's been done, but it's going to be based on our work that goes into the tool. Um, but it may raise some questions. Then they're doing a next level, and I understand the next level down, Canterbury is, to, is a pilot, um, and that's going to be funded, I think, 50-50 between the Ministry for the Environment uh, and uh, ECAN. Mm -hmm. And so, but the outcome is they aren't looking at their resources, they're looking at our resources, and these are the kind of things that they're going to bring up. I'm not sure, do we have a timetable of potential outcomes from those two studies? No, so it's just a heads up that those two studies are on their way and we don't know what's going to and, be in them. And you're right, Phil, this could be opening up a huge problem and a huge financial burden for our council, but the ultimate decision will be with us as the governors on whether we spend money on this, whether we have the money to spend on it, Forced whether to. we find the money to spend on it. So, I mean, I totally agree, it's quite frightening. But we've got to consider our environment and our water quality, and in this area, here's a huge risk. And we've also got to consider our partners, Naitahu, in this as well, who won't be very happy with this. We only need one event, and boom, we've got a, a Fox River here. So look, um, I'd like to move through this, um, and if anyone's happy to move this, it'd be great if there's no more questions. Aaron, seconded. Um, Tim, any more discussion? So I'll put the motion, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Opposed, that's carried.